got another set of questions on the aromatic chemistry topic and as always the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try them first. So part A we've got to explain or describe in terms of orbital overlap the similarities and differences between the bonding and Kekulé's model for benzene and the delocalized model. You'll notice I've drawn these two diagrams up. It hasn't mentioned include diagram. Sometimes it does say that, or label diagram. I would always advise that you do this sort of diagram for a question like this. Okay, so in Kekulé's model, you can see you've got three alternating pairs of p orbitals and they overlap and sideways to create three localized pi bonds. So basically a localized pi bond is a shared pair of electrons uh, due to, from the overlap of uh, two p orbitals, but the electron pairs shared between two carbon atoms. So you've got that happening three alternating times. In the case of the delocalized model, all six p orbitals overlap sideways to create a delocalized ring of pi electrons. It's delocalized because the electrons are shared between more than two carbon atoms shared between all six. Next part, two pieces of evidence to support the delocalized model for benzene. You'll see I've, I've given all three there. So you could talk about the carbon-carbon bond lengths. So you just say that they're all the same length and intermediate between carbon-carbon single and carbon-carbon double. If you've talked about the enthalpy change of hydrogenation, you just need to say that that was found to be less exothermic than expected. Just be careful, you haven't made the classic mistake and said hydration there. And the other piece of evidence is to do with the lack of reactivity of benzene. So I would just qualify that with an example. I've gone for the bromination reaction. So something like this will only react with bromine in the presence of a halogen carrier catalyst. Moving on to part B. So compound D is going to polymerize by that double bond. Um, open it up, it's the pi pair of electrons, um, opens up and basically you can join the monomers together. So two repeat units for polymer D would look like that. And the polymer formed from compound E, I've just illustrated it here. So we take a hydrogen from the NH2 group and the OH from the carboxyl group. Obviously that's gonna form a water molecule, but it, it enables you to join the monomers together and you would get that for two repeat units. Compound D is an example of an addition polymer, so it's effectively the adding together of those alkene monomers, whereas compound E is formed by a condensation reaction, so that's the removal of this H2O molecule, or you could go for polyamide for compound D because that is an amide bond. So moving on to this unfamiliar mechanism, so we take the ethanoyl chloride and the catalyst and we generate the electrophile, I'm just representing it like this for the purpose of the mechanism, and an AlCl4 minus ion. Then take a pair of electrons from the delocalized ring of pi electrons to the C plus, which is going to give us that intermediate there. And we then take a pair of electrons from the CH bond back into the ring, which is obviously going to give us the organic product and this H plus ion. And then we just need to show the role of the catalyst. So we're going to react the H plus ion with the AlCl4 minus ion make the other product HCl and there's the catalyst reformed. And finishing off with this flow chart, so I'll go this way first and then I'll go down there and across the bottom. So phenylethanone is a ketone. This is a reducing agent. So we're going to reduce the ketone group to a secondary alcohol. So we get that there. And then to turn that into this alkene, we react it with a strong acid basically. So you could either use sulfuric phosphoric or you could literally just put H plus. Moving down this side now, so if you react this phenyl ethanone with a mixture of sodium cyanide and H plus ions, you're effectively reacting it with HCN, hydrogen cyanide, and you're going to make a hydroxy nitrile. So we get this here, and then to turn the hydroxy nitrile into this bromo nitrile, we just need to substitute the OH group for the bromine, so you'd react it with a mixture of sodium bromide and acid. So you could either go NABR slash H plus or slash H2SO4. And then for the last part, you can do this either way around. So I've gone for the substitution of the bromine uh, for an amino group. So effectively, I would react this with 
ammonia and ethanol. And obviously it's going to give me that there. And then I need to hydrolyze the nitrile group to the carboxylic acid group so I can react it with a source of acid effectively. So H plus ions, HCl, H2SO4. And if you've done it the other way around, obviously that's your intermediate there.